good morning students i am chaitanya assistant for sri mathematics department of mathematics institute of aeronautical engineering located at dindigal hyderabad a uh, very good morning to all of you today i am going to continue my discussion on third module and the topic of discussion is the loss function and the mini max principle so let us start our discussion here i'd like to start the lesson With, a, with an important introduction that is machines learn by means of a loss function so the that statements emphasizes the importance of loss functions in machine learning so first of all if we question us what is machine learning generally we uh, mis misperceive or misconceive that machine learning means we are something about learning about machines that means learning about machines but it's not correct machine learning means machine learning means not learning about machines making the machines to learn it's about making the machines to learn by itself that is what machine learning. that means how to make the machines to program themselves uh, that means we will train the machine or computer to program it's that's what uh, basic uh, 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 the motivation behind the machine learning so machine learning means machine making the machines to learn by itself how to code or how to program that's what so in this process so many things helps uh, or or uh, in the evaluation of machine learning there are so many programs uh, so many kinds of things helped in the evolution of machine learning and one of the important thing which plays uh, in the evolution of machine learning is loss function okay so now we are going to discuss what is a loss function how it plays an important role in machine learning so loss function it's a method of evaluating how well specific algorithm models the given data that means when you want to uh, analyze a given data and and you want to uh ex uh, you want to obtain output from the given data by analyzing the given data and by processing it and you want you want to produce some output the desired output for that uh uh you, are you you may use a specific algorithm so while using that algorithm you may lose some information so the loss function helps us how strong that algorithm such that it will uh, it is it is losing very little amount of information if the algorithm is very good it leads to very loss a minimal loss of information if algorithm is not good not uh, 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 good as expected it leads to a huge loss in the information so that is why the loss function is a tool which helps us to check whether the specified algorithm is good enough in in minimizing the loss of information that's what if predictions deviates too much from the actual results loss function would cough off a very large number that means by using loss function we will calculate number and if that number is very big uh, so you know uh, the loss of information generally uh, it it is called entropy there are so many measures uh, like if you, you can exp, uh, express um, the length in centimeters meters temperature in fahrenheit in the same way the information is expressed in in terms of shannons or or what you call uh, knots so many so many knots shannons and so many uh, measures in which we we try to express the loss or information okay basing on logarithm suppose if you use log base 2 it is called shannons if you use log base 10 it will be some knots like that so depends on the logarithm uh, logarithm function we are using as a loss function okay uh, we, uh, the uh, the different measures will be used so here when you calculate uh, by using the specified loss function when you calculate the loss uh, or information loss if it is a very big number that tells that we are losing lot of information 
in the process which we applied on the given data. That means when we applied some process to analyze or extract some data, okay, then in that way we may lose the information. So if the loss function gives you a big number, means we have we are losing loss uh, big big information, a, a lot of information, and if the number is very less. That tells that we are losing very less amount of information. Okay, now gradually with the help of some optimization function, loss function learns to reduce the error in prediction. So the basic use of loss function is when you after suppose you have prepared a new algorithm in in order to train the machine to program itself. That means you have developed a new algorithm so that uh, the computer will produce a new algorithm, will prepare a new or algorithm of, of its own to solve the situation in front of it and to give the output. In this process, uh, the loss function tells the basing on the previous experience, uh, when you apply loss function algorithm, you will, you will come to understand how much information you lost when you applied that algorithm in the last previous cases. And it helps you or alarms you when you are going to apply the same algorithm in the next situation or in the forthcoming uh, future. So that it alarms you and it minimizes the red error and it strengthens the, it boosts the uh, uh, algorithm uh, in, in such a way that uh, it eliminates the drawbacks and it strengthens the algorithm. So that is an important role of loss function. In this lecture, we will go through several loss functions and their applications in the domain of machine learning. We will see uh, certain types of loss functions and we will discuss some application uh, to understand the role of loss, fu uh, loss function in machine learning. Okay. Now, even though the decision theory and machine learning are very closely related, machine learning community traditionally focuses on one of the aspects of the problem the following aspects. That is, actually decision theory is a separate branch and machine learning is a separate. It's a purely technical computer oriented data science. Actually, machine learning is nothing but is related to data science and artificial intelligence. And decision theory is completely different, a different branch. Now, we are, we are combining uh, we, we are uh, combining both of them. Okay, decision theory and machine learning, we are uh, very closely related means the role of decision theory is very high in machine learning. That's what he is telling you. Especially, you will apply decision theory by using loss functions to in, in the following three important aspects. Number one, uh, first in, uh, aspect is the loss incurred from mistakes. That means when we are entering the data, when we are entering the data or when we are doing the calculations, we may do human mistakes or errors, calculations errors. Then, then we need to apply loss function and we have to make a decision. So that is what. And second thing, distribution of the data for simplicity. Suppose there is a huge data available with us. So you 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 are trying to compress the data. That means you are applying dimensionality reduction. That means you are re re reducing the dimensions in the random way, and you have, you try to compress the data. Then also you lose the information. So in that case, you have to make a correct decision by using loss functions. And third thing is probabilistic representation. Sometimes to analyze or predict some missing feature in the data. Suppose this column is missing or this column is missing in the data. So, in order to predict that, you may apply some probability distribution parameters like normal distribution or gamma distribution or variable distribution. Whatever the distribution you, you by using some para probability distribution or Gaussian distribution, you, you will try to expect what the missing feature is, a missing column in the data set. In that course also, there might be a loss of information because we are predicting. We are not. We, are, we cannot. When we predict, it may not be exactly the original thing. It may deviate. There might be deviations. So, in these three situations, that is loss incurred due to the mistakes or loss incurred 
due to the distribution of the data for simply that means comparison of data and due to the probabilistic distribu uh, probabilistic uh, applications in these three cases we will face loss of information so in the all these three things we will develop some algorithms called loss function algorithms and we will try to minimize the loss of information by using those algorithms and so in that way the decision theory is very much closely related to machine learning okay now uh, let us look into the further aspects yes the loss incurred by the decision maker can also be utilized for the optimal selection here our second advantage first advantage is to minimize the loss of the information for that we we must learn how to build a loss function algorithm okay second thing uh, we can uh, we can uh, use that loss function uh, knowledge in making an optimal decision uh, when we repeat uh, when we come across the same situation in the next further times okay so sec first thing is to prevent the loss of information in the current situation and second thing is to up to make an optimal decision when the same situation repeats in the in the next future so two two advantages are uh, with us by using loss functions most machine learning algorithms developed through focus on one of these aspects for learning and prediction so you, you take uh, any machine learning algorithms main majority of the algorithms are generally based on uh, two um, uh, i mean the following th aspects based on learning and prediction let us look into them either learning the probabilistic model or minimizing the loss that means whenever you are trying to uh, uh, prepare an algorithm in machine learning yeah you will take into account of either of these two things one is the probabilistic model to analyze the data or the second thing is to minimize the loss in in the information when you are not applying the probabilistic distribution that, that means there are two methods one is probabilistic method and another one is non probabilistic method okay under probabilistic method you will use a gaussian distribution or normal distribution or wavy distribution or cauchy distribution or gamma distribution in order to predict the missing data features in the entire huge data set okay or sometimes you may resort to non probabilistic methods like pattern recognitions pattern recognitions or uh, some repetitive observations or clustering by or regression by doing those techniques that is called non probabilistic probabilistic methods non probabilistic methods in the non probabilistic methods you have to minimize the loss of information that is the objective okay so with either either choosing a correct probabilistic model when you are using probabilistic methods or when you are using non probabilistic methods your objective is minimize the loss so these are the two objectives you will set up when you are going to develop a new algorithm in machine learning in probabilistic models approximate inference the process of obtaining the design model from the observations when it is not tractable does not consider the task loss see in probabilistic model there is no question of uh, uh, losing information or minimizing the loss of information. there is no question of that because in the probabilistic model you will use a probability distribution and with the distribution you will try to uh, find out the missing feature in the data set so that means uh, you will apply a model a probabilistic model and you will try to track or trace out the missing features and there is no question of lo loss of information whatever it, uh, the, you, once you fix the probability distribution and you will apply it and you will find out the missing value and that's it there is uh, no question of losing of loss of information but if you resort to non probabilistic methods like like uh, let me 
give you an example. Suppose pattern recognition. Or uh, regression or clustering. In these methods, then you must take care of loss of uh, minimization of loss of information. Okay, uh, pattern recognition means suppose you are observing that uh, there is some uh, some unique pattern repeating uh, in the first column and third column and fifth column and seventh column. They are in such in a uh, in a uh, repeated pattern. You can find a resemblance in the pattern, and se second, fourth, sixth, you may find resemblance, or third, sixth, ninth, you may find some resemblances. That is called pattern regression. In these are called non-probabilistic methods. Under non-probabilistic methods, you must resort to minimization of loss. That is an important task. Okay, and the concept of risk minimization and the probabilistic representation that was discussed. Have been of great importance in machine learning community. So, whenever you resort to uh, non-probabilistic methods, the minimization of loss is a very very important thing that we have to take care of. Okay, for machine learning, the decision maker uses a procedure that operates on the data to produce a decision. So, in machine learning, what do you uh, generally, in a simple way, he is telling what is machine learning? You will. Uh, you will use a procedure or model okay that operates on the data to produce a decision that means you will have a data you will apply a model whether it is probabilistic or non probabilistic by using that model it produces an output that is what simply machine learning is telling okay now there is no one size fits all loss functions to algorithms in ma machine learning that means you cannot say that uh, there is only one loss function for all kind of situations which works in machine learning. So it depends on the situation. There are several kinds of loss functions which suit uh, which uh, whose rules differs in different situations. In one situation you may use one kind of loss function, in another situation you may use another kind of loss function. So loss the roles of loss functions differs from situation to situation. You cannot say that uh, there is only one loss function and we can apply it for all situations. There are various factors involved in choosing a loss function for specific problems. Type of machine learning algorithm chooses an ease of calculating the derivatives and to some degree percentage of outliers of the data sets. Okay, now, so I just told you that uh, depends on the situations and the requirements in choosing the loss functions. Yes. So, what kind of things will make us to design? Uh, a loss function for the given situation. Uh, in the most of the cases, these things will make us to decide over the loss function. Things are ease of calculation. That means the loss function we have chosen must be uh, very easy to handle in terms of calculations. Okay. If you choose a very complexified function f of x as a loss function, and it it uh, the calculation of values by using f of x is very tough, then that is not entertained. That means the f of x should be very easy, calculation friendly. That's what the first feature we we intend. Okay, and second, it should be feasible for further. Mathematical calculations like derivatives, integrations, like that. That means if you choose a function as a loss function f of x, it, uh, if it is feasible for the uh, calculation of derivatives, like if you are able to calculate derivative of dash x and integration integral f of x dx, then such kind of loss functions are called more preferred or more successful loss function. Okay, so things. Uh, which plays an important role in de in uh, make in deciding loss functions are number one, they should be calculative friendly. That means uh, we must feel very easy to handle with them in doing calculations. And second thing, they must be uh, very mathematically friendly. That means like uh, if you derivate uh, f of x, you uh, the derivative should exist, or if you integrate the integral should. Exist. 
the, those kinds of good qualities are uh, required for designing a loss function. Okay, now yes, broadly loss functions can be classified into two major categories depending upon the type of learning task we are dealing with. So now he is telling that uh, all the loss functions that are existing in machine learning are broadly comes into the following two categories, either this or that two categories. Number one, the regression loss uh, categories or the classification losses. Okay, so broadly the loss functions are categorized into two types. Number one, the regression losses and classification losses. Re okay, in classification, we are trying to predict output from the set of finite categorical values given a large data set of images handwritten digits categorizing them into 0 to 9 digits. So first he is telling about the set classification losses. There are two categories. Uh, broadly the loss functions are divided into two categories. Number one, the regression loss functions, regression kinds of loss functions and classification loss functions. So now he is first stressing on classification loss functions. Classification loss functions means you will classify the given huge data sets into different classes, meaning the 0 class, the class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, so on, class. So basically you will divide by observing some patterns. Okay, these are alike. Let us classify into class 0. And these are behaving in a unique way. So let us make them into class 1, class 2, class 3. Like that, basing on similar pattern or similar behaviors, you will classify and you will denote each class with the number 0, 1, 2, 3, so on, 9. Like that you will use. Okay. And if you know, you need, you may, you may consider class 10, class 11 also. It depends. Okay. These are all called class classification uh, or classified, classified law, uh, I mean, the way of class classifying the data. Regression, on the other hand, deals with predicting a continuous value, for example, given floor area or number of rooms or size of rooms, and predict the price of a room. That means, let me explain it more clearly. Yes. In classification, you will subdivide the entire huge data sets into sub subclasses like class 0, class 1, class 2, class 3 and then you will analyze what is class 0 and what is class 1. You will again penetrate it into each class and you will check then basing on the uh, your analysis you will predict the output that's what classification. Okay and in regression it's not like that. Suppose you are unable to classify the data. Suppose I am writing here your data uh, where you could classify and another data where you cannot classify. Let me write it with the help of example. I am writing like this. 2, 3, 4, 6, um, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15, Okay, this is one data set. Now I am writing another data set. Another data set, say uh, 2, 5, 6, 23, 39, 64, 88. Here you will find some patterns between 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 because they are all 2 multiples. You will classify them as 0 class like 2, 4, 6, 8 like that you will get. and you will uh, remaining are multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. You can classify again as class 3 okay or class 1 as 3, 6, 9, 12 like that, 15 like that. There of course 12 may be appearing in the both classes. That means there is a pattern. You can by following that pattern you are you are able to divide the data into two classes, class 0, class 1. That is multiples of 2, multiples of 3. 
But here in the second data set, we cannot find any kind of similarities between the numbers. That means uh, there is no such kind of uh, C, no such kind of classification is no, not possible here. Okay, of course these are even numbers, but you cannot find a unique pattern, you cannot classify. Suppose now you are asked to find out the y value at, at 7. If, if x is 7, what is y? In order to predict here, okay, then you will approach regression. Regression. Okay. So, in order to fill the gaps, intermediate gaps between these numbers, okay, what would be the gap here? What would be the gap here? Then you will resort to regression. Okay, what would be the next number after 88? That is the question. Here you, you may predict because uh, by it is following some pattern you can predict easily. But here these numbers are not at all following a pattern. So predicting the next number would be very tough. In that case we will resort to regression. Regression. That's what he is telling. Okay. Now. Now. Um, First of all, before going to the examples and uh, understanding further, let us uh, give you some notations. Here n means number of training examples. That means how many uh, uh, before making the machine to program itself. Okay, first you have to train it by giving a sample, sample data set and sample algorithm. You will train it. Then after it gets well trained, it will when you give the real data set, it will automatically develop a suitable algorithm and it will it gives the output. So the number of training examples is denoted by small n and i the training example is denoted by small i and y of i is the value or uh, output of y uh, output at i training or i the uh, procedure and y cap I is the estimation. This is the original value. This is the estimated value. Okay. In the ith triangle. That means when you apply the algorithm, you may get an, a value that is called y hat i. But the original value may be different. Okay. That is denoted by y of i. So, four notations. N means number of triangle examples. And i means the ith training or ith procedure and y of i means what is the output or what is the original value related to the ith, ith position and y, cat, y hat i is the estimated value by using the uh, sampled algorithm or model. Okay, that is what the notation will follow. Okay, now, now Broadly, loss functions can be classified into two major categories, uh, as I told you already, regression losses and classification losses. In classification, we are trying to predict output from the set of finite categorical values given large data set of images of handwritten digits, categorizing them into 0 to 9 and regression on the other hand is predicting continuous value like area, number of rooms. Just now I discussed, I am just revising and summarizing. Okay. Now, we are going to see various kinds of regression loss functions. First and foremost and more frequently applied loss function under regression loss is mean square error function. It is also called as quadratic loss function or it is also called as L2 loss function. Let, first, let us discuss what is mean square error loss function. See, um, Suppose we have a data set, say x1, x2, x3, so on, xn, and we call that column or feature as x and y, y1, y2, y3, so on, yn. Okay. Now, suppose for xk, the yk is missing. The yk is missing. We don't know what is yk and we have to extract what is the missing value of k at, at kth position of y. Okay, that's what our challenge. Now, 
we have taken a function a suitable function a predictor function called y cap x by using that we build another values another set of values called y cap 1 okay y cap 2 y cap 3 so on okay y cap n so these are the these are the values y1 y2 y3 yk yn these are the original values and y1 cap y2 cap y3 cap y1 yn cap are our predicted values or our estimated values by using a specified function y cap x our own estimated estimation function okay it may be a straight line y is equal to a plus bx or it may be a parabola or like that. now you will calculate the different the deviations between the original value from the given data set and the corresponding estimated value y1 cap that is y1 minus y1 cap and you will square it in order to remove the neg negativity you will in order to make it positive you are squaring it now in the same way you will calculate the difference between the second value of the data and second estimation that is y2 minus y2 cap and you will square it like that you proceed until the end y1 yn minus yn cap square now you have added all these things and you have divided averaged and divided it by n because there are num n kind of observations n number of observations now if this value is very high this is called mean square error why this is mean because it is an average dividing by n means it's a mean why this square because every time you are squaring okay why it is called error because you are calculating the difference between the original data value and your anticipated data value or your predicted value the difference that is called error this difference is called error y1 minus y so that is why this is called mean square error if this is very big very big then you will say that there is a huge loss of information in predicting yk okay if this is very less you tell that the loss of information is very less that means the the function you have used the y cap of x you have used is with less loss of error very minimized loss of errors that means it is a very good function you have used so in this way msc helps you to check whether you are the function you are using y cap x is a very good fit function for the given data set or not if the msc value is very high you will tell that function y cap of y cap of x you are using is is causing a lot of errors so it, you better avoid it you better introduce another function if y, if msc is very less then it says that the function you are using y cap x is very good function and it gives very very less losses so we can proceed that's what it tells in the same way there is another kind of uh, regression loss function which is called mean one minute yeah mean absolute error mean absolute error here the same thing is happening except the difference is first let us have the data set x1 x2 xn correspondingly we have this y1 y2 yn and our mission is corresponding to xk what is yk this is our mission for that we are introduced with a new uh, our own estimating function y cap x we have found uh, y cap 1 y cap 2 so on y cap n now we want to know whether this function is giving less errors or more errors that's what we want to know. for that we have one function called mean square error now we are introduced with another function mean absolute error mae here there what is the formula we have used msg is summation yi minus yi cap whole square divided by n that means y1 minus y1 cap whole square plus y2 minus y2 cap whole square but here we are removing square we are removing square instead of square we are introducing mod because there are two ways of converting a negative number into 
positive in mathematics. One is either squaring or another one is applying modulus. In the previous function, in the previous case, we used squaring that is called mean square error MS. Now here we are using modulus that is called mean absolute error. See, the, again the, when you get the answer is very big, then we tell that the y cap is not working good. It is giving it, it is leading to big errors. If the mean MA is very less, then we tell that y cap is working good. That means it is giving very less errors. That is what. So the differences are mean square error measured as the average of square differences between the predictions and actual approach. Okay. Yes. Average means we are dividing with n squared. That means every thing we are squaring. Okay. And difference. We are taking the difference between the actual value and the predicted value cap. Y i, Y a cap. Okay. That is what that is what is interpreting. It is only concerned with the average magnitude of error in respect of their directions. Here it is uh, here he is telling that the he is telling the advantages as well as the disadvantages. Advantage is here we are squaring and adding. Okay. The disadvantage is we are not we are everything we are making positive by squaring. That means you are not at all bothered where it, whether it is negative or positive. If the deviation is two, that means we are telling two steps ahead. If it is minus two, we tell that it is two steps behind. So we are missing about the direction. But due to a squaring, we are not able to judge the direction whether it is increasing or decreasing. However, due to squaring, predictions which are far away from actual values are penalized heavily in comparison to the less deviated. Also, due to squaring, there is another disadvantage. One, dis one disadvantage is due to squaring, we are not able to tell whether it is moving in forward or backward direction. That is increasing or decreasing. The second disadvantage is C. Suppose the difference between Y2 and Y2 cap Y2 and Y2 cap is 100. But we have squared it. Y2 minus Y2 cap we have squared it. That means it becomes 10,000. That means the, the value is Almost uh, 100 times, 100 times. That means he, what he is telling far away, very far away, means it is increasing the magnitude. The actual distance is 100, but when you square, it becomes very, very big number. That means it is too far. And heavily, heavy, it becomes very heavy number. Okay, that, these are the two disadvantages. And MSE is nice mathematical properties which makes it easier to calculate the gradients. But the advantage, most preferable advantage of MSE is this function MSE will be always mathematical finity. That means you can calculate derivatives. Okay. And you can calculate the integrations. So it is integration friendly, derivative friendly, addition friendly, subtraction. That is why mathematically it is more friendly. But the two disadvantages are it is this uh, in ignoring the directions. And second thing is when you square the number becomes very huge. These are the two disadvantages. And the best advantage is it's derivative friendly, integration friendly. That means mathematical friendly. Okay. Now, when it comes to the mean absolute error, it also uh, uh, ignoring the direction because you apply modulus, you cannot tell which direction is positive, negative, both are positive. Okay. But it is not as mathematically friendly as MSC because modulus, you cannot, mod x never have derivative. x square has derivative, but mod x doesn't have derivative. Okay, x square derivative is 2x, but mod x doesn't have derivative. So, th this is not as mathematical friendly as the mean square error. Okay, now let us look into one small, uh, one small loss function comes under 
SVM loss, okay, or classification loss. We will discuss only one example, which is very, very important. Okay. We have discussed under regression loss functions, we discussed two types. One is MSE and second one is mean absolute error, MEE, mean square error and mean absolute error. Okay. Now, Let us come to the classification losses. There is very widely used function which is called support vector machines loss function. In short, SVM loss function. Support vector machine loss function. In short, we call it as SVM loss function. Or it is also known as hinge loss function. Hinge loss function. Okay. It's named after him. Uh, mathematician introduced it or the computer science expert who introduced it. So the support vector machine loss function or hinge loss function. It is a very very important classification loss function which is widely used in machine learning. In simple terms the score of correct category should be greater than the sum of scores of all incorrect categories by some safety margin. According to hinge loss function the criteria to say that this category is correct rather than the second or third category. The first category is correct rather than second or third category. If the score of first category or the correct category is greater than the sum of scores of the remaining categories with a safety margin. That's what uh, the rule or the principle, inherited principle in SVM loss function. Okay, that is why we can briefly write SVM loss function value as a formula summation of maximum of 0 comma sj minus sy plus 1. Suppose you are feeling that the j category is i, jth category or jth class is correct when compared to the other classes, jth class. That means when you are given a data, you can classify the data in so many ways, say when you find a, a pattern, like see, suppose I'm writing here two, two, three, six, four, nine, One minute. Let me write like this. Two, six, uh, three, twelve, and twenty four, thirty six. Here, if you see six, twelve, twenty four, thirty six, all are divisible by 3. In the same way, 6, 12, 24, 36 are all divisible by 2. So, there are two ways of categorizing the data. One is multiples of 3 and one is multiples of 2. So, there, there might be different choices of classification of the data. Okay. Now, your challenge is which classification is very good and compared to all, I mean, you have to judge this way of classification is good or this way or this way or this way. So, for that, you must take the help of SEM loss function. According to this function, suppose you have uh, n, ways of n ways of classifying the data. You have n ways of classifying the data. Okay, n ways of classifying the data. Along them, you feel that jth way is the correct way. Jth way is the correct way. Okay, that is your, your intention. That Jth way of classification is most strongest way than the all other ways. So to check that, you will calculate this. That is, you will choose the maximum of either 0, comma Sj minus S Y I. Okay. That means the others. Uh, ith, ith classification. That means uh, and uh, Kth class, that means if you put i is equal to 1, first way, first classification, i is equal to 2, second classification, like that. You take the difference 
and you will take a margin safe margin is one okay now uh, you will you will take the sum of all all these uh, you will pick the maximum of all these two numbers that means uh, here you putting zero because either the thing will be zero or positive that's what you, you not align negatives okay either it should be zero or it should be positive that's what by choosing maximum and you will sum all these things if this number is very huge then you will tell that j is not at all a good classification if it is very very less then you tell that j, j classification is very very good so basing on this calculation you try to know whether j classification is good or not or it is giving very less loss of information or giving very huge loss of information let me explain with a live example with that i will come to the lesson here we are having uh, some images we receive some group of images of uh, related to an animal okay and and we are in a confusion that uh, the given images relates to dogs or relates to cats or relates to pandas okay that means we received some images which are very clumsy not clear but we are expecting that those images are related to either dogs or cats or pandas so now you have made some calculations okay and uh, uh and uh, you have listed this table by using your calculations you got this table maybe pixels or lengths or breadth somewhat you are listed like this okay now you got three images and basing on three or uh, three classifications and uh, you have to tell whether it, uh, all the images belongs to dogs group or cats group or pandas group. now these are the numbers you obtained in your calculations okay now you will use this svm loss function formula that is maximum of zero comma predicted minus original plus one predicted minus original plus one okay that's what you are using the formula now if you take if you take this first call or image one okay image one suppose you you are predicting that the, the all the images represents dogs group so this this one will be your okay you are predicting that all these belongs to dogs group then uh, the original uh, suppose your prediction is correct that means your prediction is correct mean this will be correct value so you will calculate the differences like this 1.33 minus 4.26 plus 1 minus 1.01 .01 minus 4.26 plus 1 and if you calculate this uh, the answer will be minus my uh, it's a negative it's a negative value if you calculate this the answer is again negative so in the both cases you will get when you choose maximum maximum according to the svm loss function you will get the maximum as 0 and 0 okay and if you add these two things answer is 0 so here the svm loss function is giving that for for dog for the prediction of dog if the dog is correct the loss is very zero loss is zero okay now suppose if you go with the prediction of the group of images you received are cats then the calculations will be like this minus 1.20 will be the original value and the deviations with the margin 1 and the 0 maximum of this see here you will observe this we have positive number and here you will observe that Uh, this is a negative number this, this answer is zero this is a positive so here you are getting a positive loss here getting zero loss 
and here when you deal with this you are getting 0 here and if you see this you are getting a positive here total the answer is positive. So when you compare these three the loss where you get a very small number here you are getting small number that means according to SVM loss image 1 or classification 1 is the correct classification when compared to the classification 2 or classification 3 ok. In this way you will use SVM loss function ok and also there are some other classification loss functions like I am just quoting cross entropy loss by using this logarithm log by C ok y i log by i cap of course this is also used for regression loss regression loss y i log by i cap 1 minus y ok so these kinds of loss functions we come across in our uh, machine learning algorithms ok and minimax algorithm I just wanted to quote what is the meaning of minimax algorithm minimax algorithm is a recursive or backtracking algorithm which is used for decision making and game theory it provides optimal move for the player assuming that opponent is also playing out that means it is a two player games in a two player games assuming that both will play in such a way that optimal optimal strategy that means he tries to make maximum profit he tries to make minimize loss like that ok in such games you will use mini max algorithms predict the moves of the players in the next steps what is the second move of x what would be the second move of y what is the third move of x what would be the third move of y like that this mini max algorithm states that choose the minimum of maximum that is what minimum that means out of maximum benefits of x has to choose the minimum and out of the maximum losses of y has to choose the minimum that's what mini max algorithm this is a backtrack algorithm it, it helps in designing their various kinds of uh, machine learning algorithms we'll discuss it in detail in the next classes and thanks for your patience learning with this i'm concluding the lesson and we'll meet in the next lecture with an important topic thank you all like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates